Hello, my name is Dennis Price Morgan, and you're being given notice that there's a lot of absolute twaddle just ahead. In fact, it's the finest self-indulgent material I've ever seen or heard, which is the entire point. However, there will be some helpful information, so stay tuned. This is the Brain Software Podcast, episode 185. And hello from the hypnotic world epicenter, Toronto, Canada. I'm Chris Thompson, and today, Mike Mandel and I will be answering questions sent in by our students around the world, mostly about hypnosis, but we'll work in some really cool personal development stuff too. So stay right where you are, because you're going to love it. Hey, how are you now? Thanks again. Greetings from Meaford, Ontario, the home of Insignificant. Other than the fact that the Canadian Crokinole champion Dave Ellings once ate at the Red Rooster Diner. The hypnotic storm is hit near full force 10 out of Navarone, but we're hunkered down in the down hunkery like Jack the F and Hunker. And yes, the werewolf candle's burning just for you. The power might go out with all the lightning strikes. So let's get to the most important question of all, which is, what on earth occurred up in Meaford, like uh, to take away all of our farmland tranquility and that? Uh, <laughs> uh, these, these are, are days, days of, of victory. victory. Hey, folks, I'm Chris Thompson, and welcome to the Hypnotic Vortex. Oh. And please join me in welcoming the King of Calibration, the Rogerer of Rapport, and the man who puts the cat back in catalepsy. Mike Mandel! Yes, Christopher! I love that Here neck cranking. I'm so go. into this. Oh. We have a great show today. This is Mailbag Show. Yes, it's going to be... Not in the way that it sounds, not though, because that could bag, be phonological ambiguity. Yeah. Yeah. In, so, in fact, sorry, I just talked over you. That's right. And I want to start the banter part of our show <laughs> by disclosing this. I, was, I told you, I sent you a Voxer the other day. I was on a nice long walk, and I was yeah. listening to a Joe Rogan podcast yeah. on my AirPods Max wow. with no noise canceling yeah. on so the street traffic doesn't bother it's awesome nice. yeah. and he pointed out the importance of not talking over each other not right. so much if it's a, a one to another interview but if yeah. there's a group and he says that's why they all wear headphones when they're doing their podcast yeah. because they can hear what it sounds like the way when the audience hears it talking each over, over yeah, each other yeah and so we're gonna do our best not to kill the fun right, for us because right. it's fun to talk over yeah, each other it's, it's but to make nice. sure it's more valuable for you that's right. That's why I like it because it's so nice. Now listen, <laughs> I love give that us voice. give us the usual banter, uh, the mm. lead in. We oh. got an interesting email. Okay. I'd like you to share it. Thank in the you. Sharery. Yeah, I'm not even going to read it out loud. I'm simply <laughs> oh, going to enjoy you semaphore. I'm going to. Exp- I don't have it in front of me. In fact, I just deleted okay. it because I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. They're so, nice people though. Don't be. Don't be all hating. No, everyone's nice. The pre-frame of all this, okay? We run a podcast. We've been doing this for many years, and I guess it's popular enough that when other podcasters or other experts want to get exposure, they usually hire some sort of PR firm or a promotional firm of some sort that would usually attempt to get them guest interview spots on podcasts. Right. So probably two or three times a week, we get an email from some person saying, hey, I, I represent so-and-so. We love your podcast. And I think that so-and-so would be an amazing guest. And here's all about her or him. And that's usually the format. And by the way, if you're... <laughs> If you're doing copywriting or marketing or whatever, remember, no one cares about you. They care about themselves. Yeah, that's sell the, the sizzle, not so the steak. When we get an email that says, oh, I'm going to make up a name, Joanna Smith, totally random. That was her name. <laughs> It was not. It was not. (laughs) Joanna Smith is an expert in anxiety relief. And Joanna Smith has been on the the Dave Letterman show. And I'm just making that part up. And Joanna Smith has published these books. And Joanna Smith has been a podcast guest on so-and-so podcast. And I'm like, as a reader going, you don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We've got that topic covered or whatever it is. We think she'd make a great interview and we just usually delete these things or politely write yeah, back and they say write back again we say sorry there's not a fit you know? thank you well he's an nlp practitioner yeah i'm a freaking nlp trainer it's it like it doesn't okay. bring a differentiating no. angle so it doesn't something new it doesn't interest us right right whereas you know if if michael pantalon's rep came on and said hey like i i see that you guys did an entire video about instant influence yeah 
would would you like to have me on as a guest? We could talk about it. Be like, yeah, yeah, of course. It's always less than it'd be good. Because to first of all, you're us. proving that you've actually listened to our podcast. Right. You understand what we're doing. But better. that was not the case no. here, was it, Chris? So we got usually the format goes like this. Email one. Would you like to have so and so as a guest because she's amazing? Which is responded delete. You delete or no yeah. thanks or whatever. Generally, delete. if we don't, sometimes the second email comes in. The second email is, oh, just following up. And in this case, this was the interesting, clever twist. Not so clever in the end, because yeah. we, we we're on to this. But we're this was the first time this ever happened to us. The the rep or agent or whatever, is, let's call her Julie. Let's call her Ken Sweatman, says, oh, hi, it's, it's Julie again. And uh, just wondering if you saw that we wanted to have so and so on your podcast. And by the way. I went ahead and left a review in Apple Podcasts for your podcast, and I've cut and pasted it here for your reference. So the red flag starts going up at this point. I read the review that this person wrote, and yeah. I suppose it's public, so probably people can find it. And it says essentially not it's fluff it's fluff language uh -oh, about that, how that this is such a flag. useful fluff. podcast with all kinds of wonderful tips on personal development obviously never and listened to it guest interviews that are fascinating and i'm going <sighs> this is a cut and paste job we've had like what six guest interviews out of maybe 185, 185 podcast or 184 red at the flag point. out of 180 flag. some podcasts we've yeah. had maybe six or seven interviews and if they actually watch this podcast they wouldn't want to freaking be on it, <laughs> which is the entire point. So there's our All little right. there's so, our little preframe of make sure you want to build rap actionable tips. I like this. Always give actionable tips. Okay. If you want to build rapport with people and you're approaching them with an offer of some sort, yeah. make sure you know something about them. If you do a cut and paste job, you don't understand the material. If you're going to write an email, even if it's going to say, hey, I, I want to suggest so-and-so for this position, connect it to their story. And I was listening to your episode about truth and lies, and I thought that this was such a okay, fascinating Ken Swetman, point. Whatever. Ken Swetman. Do something. Yeah. Okay. I didn't mean to shut you off so quickly. I was just I giving you a, a, a reined in warning. I should have waved a red flag. Here, here, just so you know we're here. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, let's get to it. Let's get to this pecker. So, right. Chris. We have think tank words. Explain what the think tank words are. All right. For. Not again, Swetman at all. And the think tank we'll words see. of the day are uh, basically three words that we're going to randomly see if they can make unconscious yeah. sense to us. We're going to fit them into the topic of conversation. So we're going to give you three words. Ross, who's editing this, going to pop them up on the screen. We're going to talk about what they mean to we this are. topic. And yep. then we'll see if, if we they make any sense them and usually position. connect them in. Sometimes we don't. And that's fine. So first word is basket <laughs> i'm so glad i know what all three of these words if mean. you don't know what the word basket is you'd probably you're a, be weaving you'd one probably be a basket case in fact yeah. green day has a song called basket case green is an right? excellent band yeah there you go so i'm thinking basket i'm thinking <laughs> it holds well, stuff but me, it's it, full of holes it jumps to bastard right away mm -hmm. and the reason why like i said stepping mm -hmm. stone the reason why is because my dad never swore i've heard him say I heard him say hell and damn, I think. The strongest thing I ever heard him say was he called another guy a selfish basket. Oh, wow. Because he didn't want to say selfish bastard. Basket. I, of course, don't have those constraints. Okay. So that's so interesting. Basket, so the, you put something in. Disguising swear words. You disguising put something swear words. In, put a swear word in it. usually has holes. It's porous. It breathes. Right? Yeah. It you, breathes. You so can it, hold solids, but not liquids. That's it. <laughs> well, not very well. Now, we have confusion coming out of this. Second word, confusion. Confusion is a major part of hypnotic induction with all of Erickson's work. Actually, that is a very good point, isn't it? That is a good mm. point. Okay, so confusion. So what being... is your recommendation? So third word, recommendation. Yeah. Ooh, well, this is an interesting I recommend trio. that you watch out for confusion. Being and used. people who are making arguments that should hold logic, but it's really a basket full of holes. And that... Yes, because a lot of arguments argumentation discussion mm -hmm. the proper use of the term is not really argumentation it's they're, they're threading things together and it doesn't hold and in fact i noticed so much so that the use of logical fallacy comes up over and over and the top ones we've done an episode i'm sure yes we have but i would Boys say the biggest logical fallacies that i see over and over yeah are ad hominem so attacking the person rather than the argument you always say that because you're stupid appeal to authority or you know or just all oh, you, i know is yeah, my yeah. doctor said this yeah. yeah appeal to authority appeal to majority everyone else everybody's is doing, doing it, doing it. why do wouldn't i leap off that all cliff the cool kids are doing it yeah 
and a false dilemma or false dichotomy, as it's also known. Yeah, it's know? either this or this. Well, it's yeah. leaving out the other eight things it could be. You are you're either, either with us to... or you're with the terrorists. Oh, that yeah, was a exactly. classic false there dichotomy. So, and so we're going we to fit all these peckers but, in, see where we're that going. That has nothing to do with the no, podcast. But we got topic, some great it? questions coming. Right. In, and I've given the first name of everybody to preserve their privacy. So, first of all, Wendy asked Chris. Chris, she had Chris. You've given the first Water name, Chris. like actual first <laughs> names or made yeah, up These first are actual names. first okay. names, but all only right. the. Do you like the way this will go any way at all? I'm putting it over my ears now for this part. Okay. That's hilarious. So, Wendy is dealing with clients who have abandonment issues, and she's discovering. They also have chronic pain, and she wants a comment. Isn't that an interesting discussion? Oh, well, yeah, that opens an entire door here towards ooh, the basket and the oh. weaving, the weaving of things. Weaving and the weaver. Let's so talk about abandonment pain issues. Chronic can yeah. be tied to emotional pain. Absolutely. Woven not? together like Jack the Weaver. Now, mm. listen, abandonment issues, I understand. This is something I have. I have freaking huge abandonment issues because I'm an Enneagram 8, Buddy, and thought, we all I do. I thought you were over that. I'm not, no, it's I'm okay. not. I'm it's here in, for you. Stop touching me. <laughs> it's intrinsic to who I am. And I'll give you some quick examples. Uh, okay. Jerry Childs beat me up when I was a kid. My dad came out and I thought my dad was going to come and rescue me because Jerry was a bigger, older boy. And instead I got in trouble. I felt like my dad abandoned me. You got in trouble because my, you got beaten up. When my nasty teacher, Tom Goulding, almost gave me a, a nervous breakdown in grade five, <sighs> I thought my dad was going to come and, you know, punch him out or something. And clearly there's I remember. issues here. Never I happened. Was there. You were not there. You weren't even born. <laughs> And so anyway, that has played out my life that you don't abandon anyone. No one left behind. Yeah. And I know with you as a nine, breaking rapport can feel like abandonment if you're not careful. Buddy, I feel abandoned sometimes by being the only guy in this house other than my dog. You know, I've got a wife and two girls. And so it's all girl talk all the time. Not saying no, no, there's it. anything wrong with that. But a lot of the yeah. times, no, actually being serious for a moment, there are times where my kids, they want to talk about stuff, but only with mom. Not with me, because because I'm just dad, and I don't yeah, understand stuff. Yeah, I got a cat who does the same and that, thing. I'll tell you that can give a dad some abandonment issues. Well, it can't, but it really can't. And you know, Dave Tate, I I walked home from public school, scared of the bullies, mm -hmm. and I led him through where the bullies were, so that they would beat him up, not not me. you. I remember and that you terrible, told that story. terrible feeling in That's retrospect. A crappy but thing. Wendy's saying mm -hmm. that clients with abandonment issues, she's running into those have chronic pain as well. This is very interesting. Because when I got rid of my own, um, what the heck's it called? F fibromyalgia by running a protocol that I created. Uh, when I got rid of that and I'd suffered with it for years, it was me beating up on myself emotionally, all at an unconscious level. If people are beating up on themselves, in our opinion, it can have a huge effect on their physical body. Actually, yeah. Your fibro, you were talking about the fibromyalgia, yeah, yeah. right? There was an emotional, deep emotional Aspect to aspect it. to it. Yeah. That's it. I was going to say root, but that just yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's yeah emotional aspects to problems, and in fact, that's why. Like, if you talk to Freddie Jackwin about his arrow technique, which is right. often used for chronic pain, he'll throw that. He'll launch arrows all day long at emotional pain. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that lines up very well with we've often we've we we've often taught that the same tools you use for physical pain. We have a, a product, in fact, on our website, the chronic pain management product. We teach people to use those same tools on emotional pain, don't we? Well, you know, let's let's talk about that for a second. Not, not a sales pitch. No, no, yeah. but I'm just saying if we create glove anesthesia, cataleptic mm -hmm. limb, make it numb, move it around to the other hand, the feet, and so on. So you're compounding the suggestion, making the numbness extreme. Person has to have dental work, you put their hand on, the numbness flows, then they can do the dental work. All hypnotic pain. suggestion. And all hypnotic mm -hmm. suggestion, but that works on you can use you can have it love flow anesthesia. into the part of your body that's feeling that emotional discomfort. No, not or that. It is. What it, are you thinking? It's like if a person feels grief. Oh, you put feel your it? hand on put that your spot. hand yeah. on it. You have an activating hand to heal that's it. Better. But it's the same thing. All this to say, Wendy, um, you're clearly doing good calibration to notice that people with abandonment issues, you're noticing that there is I think um, that's chronic pain aspect. Of course, we can't mm -hmm. verify it or dis disprove it. So I'm going to go by your calibration and say you're you're probably onto something here. I would only say this. It is extremely likely from our experience, and we're not medical doctors, mm -hmm. but it's extremely likely that when you resolve the emotional issues around abandonment through whatever means you choose, mm -hmm. the chronic pain will disappear if it is connected. It becomes um, 
Freud would say you take them through the effect bridge back to the cause, then the symptoms disappear. Likewise with this, you solve the abandonment issues. If mm -hmm. the physical pain is part of it, then it will go. I brought to mind immediately, I, I, I bring to mind the uh, client I had many years ago in the mid-1990s when I was a therapist all the time doing stuff like this. And this woman had PTSD, horrible mm -hmm. PTSD from a series of rapes, back pain, gastrointestinal upset, neck pain, all this stuff. One session, once she let go of all the resentment and mm -hmm. all the garbage around the PTSD, and we healed that, all of her pain disappeared. We just disappeared, and it was tied to it. Okay, I got a question for you on Your this. turn. I'm and that's why coffee. this is so awesome. This is yeah. fun. Okay, so hypothetically, Wendy's client comes in for abandonment issues, does not talk about the chronic pain ahead of time. Client sits down, we do the interview, we discuss that there's abandonment issues and also abandonment issues. Abandon the ban I got apparently I've got word abandonment issues. Yeah. I don't want to abandon them out of my mouth. Yeah. Um that's a huge red flag. Abandonment issues. Client then mentions, oh, also chronic pain. And Wendy, being clever, goes, Aha, I think that these things yes, may be yes. connected. Does the therapy on the abandonment issues? So now, does she or does she not have a feeling of safety? leaving a hypnotic suggestion such as, and when you notice that these abandonment issues are completely in the past, any unnecessary chronic discomfort tied to those issues is also gone. Yeah, sure. Without a doctor's note to deal with pain. That's my point. We always tell people, if you're dealing with chronic pain, get your doctor. Primary health care physician. Primary physician's Get the sign off so you can do it. But- I also appreciate that, for example, again, coming back to Freddie Jackwin and his son, Anthony Jackwin, who are huge, I said that weird, Jackwin, huge fans of them, they often use the language to eliminate any unnecessary yes. pain. Which useless, the old, need. useless, unnecessary pain. Now, here's how I would handle that, Chris. I would do it slightly differently, mm -hmm. as primarily as an Ericksonian, although I do all the other stuff. Yeah, that was a very direct stellar. suggestion. So here's how I would handle it. I would deal with the abandonment mm -hmm. issues, like... Wendy's talking about, you said, it set the person free from that, help mm -hmm. them get rid of it and bringing them out of hypnosis and say, and when you come back to the surface on the count of five, whatever, you will notice how amazingly good you feel now. Implication is mm -hmm. it's going to have a physical consequence. Well, there are so many ways, you know, when you said Ericksonian, yeah. you can, okay. The, the description I gave earlier was a very direct and you'll notice that any unnecessary physical discomfort is also gone. Yeah. Blah, 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 whatever. But you can say, you know, and it's easy for a person to notice that all kinds of discomforts are tied to other discomforts. And when that discomfort's gone, others can just disappear too, can't they? You know, there's all kinds of things that you can do here. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going at it the indirect way. Right. Without addressing it directly. So, yes, there's many, many things. When does, Wendy, let us know how this turns out. We'll be interested. We've got another. That's a good point, Chris. We have great questions from Dan. This is a really good list. Buddy. Now, listen to this. Mm. The top three reasons for people not completing certification with MMHA. Oh, so we, I, I actually don't know what. Well, the let's top let's three discuss this are. and see mm. if we can we can figure it out. OK, um, so to back it up, we have to make sure that we explain that to those who are say. not you our students. Frame it first. We run the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. It's a community, a training, a certification program. And of course, it's and ongoing it's worldwide. It's things like we're doing here in the podcast. We generally do on Zoom with our students a couple of times a month. Without Plus, we have a either. private community where there's text, more text based chat or we'll drop in videos. But mostly the core training is 24 modules of hypnosis training. It covers everything from beginner to advanced. And it is more content than we typically would teach in our multi thousand dollar live Five training day flagship that is training, taught yeah. in Toronto, which yeah. we haven't been able to teach for a while, unfortunately. But thankfully, we have the the online program. Anyway, a couple of years ago, we introduced certification training because people were asking for it. It is a certification of knowledge because it's basically multiple choice. We cannot test questions, but it's it. not easy to pass. You have to legitimately go through the lessons and you actually have to do a quiz for every lesson, 10 question quiz, pass that. You have to pass them all sequentially. Then you can take the final and exam. And it's 80% is a pass. 80 is a pass. And it's not easy on purpose so that when people do pass, they feel they legit- They've earned it. Have more confidence in their knowledge rather than, it's not just, oh, here's a piece of paper. And that's why we also don't charge for it. We're not selling paper. That's stupid. By the way, you don't need a hypnosis certification to practice hypnosis. No. Just like, we have an article on this. I'll make sure we link it in the show notes. But 
it isn't a profession that requires certification, just like you don't require, and I'm not trying to equate hypnotherapy to these other professions, but in terms of the similarity of not needing a certification, you don't need a certification to be a barber or a house painter or, or a to dog fix, walker to fix the deck or of even your house a, or a personal trainer. Or do an oil change While on your car. While there are certifications yeah. you can get. Yeah, you don't need certifications legally to run a business. You should have skill. And getting a certification is a good way to confirm that you either have skill or at least the knowledge and do the practice. So this is not like, hey, you've got this paper. Now you can go fix people. You should think of it as your starting point that you know enough to definitely get out there and absolutely begin. Right. And people have an, a lot of people have an external video. Uh, right. Start again. Right. And a lot of people have an external visual check yeah. to know that they're competent. They need to see the certificates mm -hmm. on the wall. A uh, while back when we were purging our house, I went through my filing cabinet. And you chucked a bunch I of them. I chucked right? all my mm -hmm. certificates, everything, you know, graphoanalysis, hypnosis, because I can either do the stuff or I can't. Fortunately, I can't. Yeah. But um, so let so what what do you think the top three reasons are for people not completing certification? I'll give you the first one: discouragement. Yeah, people want to be given all the right answers so they can do it right the next time, if, but we can't do that. Yeah, because why to don't we just give ourselves hard. the right mm -hmm. answers and say you sent them in? You know, yeah. if they don't pass, I I don't want to say fail because you can take these things, you can take the quizzes as often as you like, you can take the certification final as many times as you wish with a seven day delay. You're in right, between. you can't do it back to but back. But I think a lot of people they'll go through the quiz and then let's say they get to the final and they they don't pass it right away. They get an email that says, "Hey, you got a seventy five and they go, "Oh, darn it." Well, not enough people are probably sitting down with a pad and paper and going through the exam and then noting down, gee, I'm not sure about this question on the right, Esdale right. state. I'm going to, in case I don't pass, I'm going to go and review that lesson. Mm -hmm. That's the way I think the best student would do this is go through it, mark your selections, whatever you think is the correct answer. And then, but make sure you take a note of the topic that was asked about in case you're not confident in your right, answer. Right, right. I'm not sure if the answer is this or this. Gee, I'm guessing here. Admit it when you're guessing. Anyway, so you're write a note, study. You're, you're take in it complete again. agreement then. Mm -hmm. hey, people have this discouragement because they're not doing that sort of thing. They're mm -hmm. not paying attention to their answers. Another th reason I think people aren't completing it is people have not even done the first run through the quiz. Yeah, you know the the exam because they don't feel they're quite ready. It's always always the yeah, oh they're let, holding off. Let they're just, just not yeah, even it's starting. It's a delaying. Yeah. yeah, it's a delaying mm -hmm. for doing the. I'll do it later. Test. I'll do right. it later when I'm ready. It's always I need that next bit of knowledge. It's the same reason that a lot of skilled hypnotists won't start charging money to see clients to help them because they right. figure well if I just take this one more course, get this one more tool. Imagine like a carpenter who really knows what he's doing. Yeah. But he just wants like one more. If I just have that one more, one more Nail. bit for my router to do this <laughs> yeah. chamfered edges or whatever, I would just have this one, you know, new planing machine or yeah. something. I'll be good. So we haven't got a third one. Mm -hmm. I don't boy. have a third one. Yeah. I don't have a third one either. Um, I think people delay. They don't think they're ready or they're just third one would be they don't actually care. That's the obvious third That's one. That's my superpower. They want to study. Yeah, yeah, you just don't care. That's what my power is. They want to study amazing. hypnosis, but they don't care about getting certified. And that's fine. That's okay. You don't have to take it. We're not going to email you and harass you. Well, let's go on to Dan's a lot of other people, questions. A lot of people do take the cert, Mike, and they <laughs> yes. love it. And they find that it was a wonderful challenge. They get out the other side and they go, I feel so awesome having done that. Now, that's a really good point because how many times we see people posting an MMHA Engage or group and They're saying, so proud I did it. And yeah. everybody's and on board. And you a lot of responses, like, yeah. right? People going, congratulations. So by the way, the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy does not charge extra for certification. And no, you can start with a free trial, 14 days, at least as we speak right now, and totally free for the free. first 14 days. Sign up on our website. That's all I'm going to say. And remember, we are not connected with Brennan Hall or Charbonneau Lounge at St. <laughs> Michael's College, University of Toronto at all so don't go there that's correct now, dan also asked what are the unintended benefits of being a hypnotist oh that's so cool i think that the unintended benefits of being a hypnotist are primarily around how you will start to notice other people who have problems in their lives and how they're connected to unconscious patterns or unconscious beliefs unconscious behaviors and you'll realize that people are basically screwing up their own lives. They just don't know how to unscrew no, them No, that's up. a good one. That's a good mm -hmm. one. For me, uh, one of the unintended benefits is 
communication. I, just, I see hypnosis everywhere. Yeah, I just absolutely. see it mm-hmm. everywhere. I said from that case I mentioned before years ago, my wife and I were at one of the downtown banks in Toronto and uh, in line, and there was a big poster and it literally said, borrow to get ahead so you don't fall behind. Yeah, that's you entirely that's hypnotic. hypnotic language. You're going to get ahead if um, you borrow. Well, aren't you going further into debt? You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you, another benefit of being a hypnotist is understanding the power of effective communication because there are different, like we said, there are different styles of hypnosis. There's the very direct in your face, Dave Elman type yep. of authoritative language, which isn't what we would use in everyday life. That's where the Ericksonian end of the spectrum comes in and being able to talk in a congruent and engaging way, but still using, let's call it what it is in some cases, fluffy language that has fluffy potential meaning, fluffy dynamic meaning for different people at different times. All right. Being able to communicate in a congruent way using words that mean specific things to specific people. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to influence people. Quick side note, we talked about this briefly. Should we discuss politicians and the difference between hypnotic language and (laughs) complete (laughs) fluff that you'll hear? So- Here we are in Canada, and this is not a political message of any kind, but just because we're in the midst of election campaigning at the federal level, Mm -hmm. and the current prime minister is Justin Trudeau, Liberal Party in Canada, and he he has a particular habit of always mentioning things like, and because of all Canadians, and for we will always stand behind Canadians. And he says all of this stuff that essentially means nothing. And so sometimes people, people will ask, is that the same as hypnotic language? Well, it's sort of content free. Poly speak yeah. is a very is a very unusual I thing. I would say that's the commonality. There's content free, but there's not hypnotic language patterns necessarily used. And no. there is definitely, in many cases, lacking like a cause and effect connection. And certainly lack, lacking rapport a lot of the time. Oh, too. for sure. Politicians of all stripes. My wife mm-hmm. and I are political atheists. We don't believe in politicians. But um interestingly, Remember the whole politician's maxim is you do not answer the question they ask you. You answer you the question to the one you, you want wish to answer. they had asked mm-hmm. you. And the other one is, you know, just describe, they will describe the problem instead of telling you a solution. Yeah. Do you remember years ago, I heard this on another podcast and I told you about it. I think I was on a streetcar on my way to our jujitsu class. So Argentina. this, we've got to be going back seven years oh, ago man. or more now because Getting I've been old. living here for that long. And I told you about a guy who explained an influence technique. It was the, isn't the real issue. And, that's, <laughs> and we turned it into the absurd, is, isn't the real issue. <sighs> and that's what politicians will do, but they don't use the, isn't the real issue intro. So if somebody asks a question like, you know, isn't it true, Mr. Trudeau, that your government has been printing billions and billions of dollars and that's causing inflation and is wrecking the Canadian economy? And I'm not expressing a judgment. I'm just giving you an example. Sounds question. like a judgment to me. And, he'll, you know, he'll say red flag going up. Well, that's that's a that's a really important question. And the thing about money is we all have to consider for the benefit of all Canadians exactly where investments need to be made. And this government has okay, always stop. supported- Okay, you know, you, you know hear I mean? this on the radio yeah. every time I turn it on. I want to hear this <laughs> You now. get my point though. But yes, and then we took, unfortunately. It to, we took it to an extreme and go, well, isn't the, the real, real issue, issue here, here that money is printed on a blend of cotton and polymer? Yeah. And this is affecting oil consumption around the world because as money is printed, more and more oil-based products are using. And there are pipelines. We just take it into absurdity. And it's hilarious. It's a pattern interrupt to us. Well, but, but beyond that, because then when you get to it and you say, and what, what are, are you, you prepared, prepared to, to do about this now? <laughs> you throw it back you on them. put the person okay, on it. Let's it's get a, back to our questions. Yeah. This All is right. Dan. I'll just rain canyon here. But that's here. why this is a podcast. I know, but he's always oh, saying man. to me, we got to give solid content. We got to actually, saying, we got to rock it through these because we need to wrap we up in about rock it through. 15 minutes. Oh, that rides. Okay, well, let's let's jump to Anne now. All Anna, right. Anna asks, how do you get your first paying client through the door? Isn't that a great question? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, here's what you do. Simple as this. You do free sessions for people that you want to work with, obviously that you care about helping to get yourself confident that you've done this and have had a result. As soon as you say, I know what I'm doing, I helped this person and this would have been worth paying for, 
you charge the very next client. You don't have to charge a lot. You can even do it for a, you know, a bottle of wine or whatever. Like they bring you a gift or something. But it's, in fact, who is it that we know in um, oh, our friend in Eastern Europe? Okay, just losing interest. But CEO of a company know. that makes prosthetics. Oh, brilliant. What's his name? Nagender. Nagender. Thank you. He would, he just, he doesn't need the money. He's doing it for free. But people will bring him, he insists that they bring him something. So they might bring him baked goods or whatever. Prosthetic arm or something. Whatever. As long as they compensate you, okay, that's just go from free to you've been compensated in some way and then immediately shift to being paid. And I like Mike's policy. You didn't make this up, but it came from someone else. Your fee is always the same until you, unless you, Wave unless, it completely. Unless I wave it completely. Mm -hmm. Well, that comes from uh, Sherlock Holmes. Right. In the Arthur Conan Doyle books. If, if fee is always the same. You know, I'll do. Anyway, if, yeah, get a good fee structure and get your first client. Do some experiments. Get confident enough that you're willing to charge. Use second position NLP uh, yes. to think if I was in that person's shoes and I was helped and overcame this problem, what would it be worth to me? And if you can convince yourself that the solution would be worth at least 10 times what you're charging charge them. Yeah. Recognize, mm -hmm. give yourself the benefit and your client, the benefit of charging enough to help them make the change. You get yeah. leverage or leverage out of that. So anyway, um, Alexis here asks for a list of books and courses for the recovering addict. I thought about this and I don't have one. Um, for the recovering addict. The one I don't book know. that mm -hmm. came to mind, notice it's recovering, not recovered. The one book that came to mind for me and the one author, um, we believe all addictions are ego state based and it's an ego state dominating the executive. So it prevents the wounded, the vaded state mm. from becoming executive. So addictions, whether it's, you know, crossword puzzles or alcohol or drugs or whatever, that state hogs the executive to keep the pained one out. So to that end, I would recommend reading the books by Gordon Emerson. In fact, the first one I would recommend for the average person is Resource State Therapy. Okay. Ego states are resources. That's a great book by Dr. Gordon Emerson. He will help people get controlled some of these states, states and make some changes in their life. Second one is Tony Tony Robbins. Right yeah, away. I was thinking put any personal development book in there that takes people from their past addiction to right. their future. What is it that you're building towards now instead? What do you want? If you can get people aligned towards their future direction yep. rather than, oh, I'm an addict, I'm recovering. What's his first one? Unlimited Power? Unli Unlimited Power was Recommended. the first book that he wrote and the second book I believe was Awaken, Awaken the, the Giant, Giant Within. Within. Either Both one are awesome. is great yeah. and they can help you turn around mm -hmm. your life by helping you take control of your life instead yeah. of feeling that life is happening to Unlimited you. Unlimited Power would be so a great choice. So let's continue. We've okay. got here, uh, Alexis asks, when English is not the first language, is graphology still effective? Yes, graphology will work. The kind Frame that I teach. Frame this a bit. What is Pro graphology? Graphology Why is scientific handwriting analysis. That's the one I'm trained in. Mm. I've done it forensically. You can take it to the bank. But provided they are using our script, our particular alphabet, it will apply whether or not they're speaking I'm English. glad you clarified script, not words, but That's script right. as in the alphabet. Yes. Yeah. So I can't do graphology on Hebrew or Chinese, but I'm yeah. sure there are people who Maybe there are people can. who do, but we don't know the, the patterns to be looking for. No, in those, in which those is why languages. we're not even right. going to try discussing that. There you go. So as long as it's A, B, C, D, F, G, and the rest. All right. Then now here, let's, let's go right to friends here. Okay. He said, and this is a mm. great one. It, it sounds like a, a minor thing, but it isn't. How do you help nail biters? Oh, that's, uh, well, of course, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Oh. I used to in my, well, I guess it's probably youth. from my teenagers or whatever, right through to my 20s, yeah. I was a nail biter. Now people said, oh, nail biting is because of nervousness. And I always disagree. I'm sure that's possibly true for people. Well, toenail biting. Is I don't believe that that was the case for me. Nail biting was that I didn't like the feeling of my nails being too long. I thought quotes. with you, nail biting was more of a hobby than anything <laughs> there else. There we go. I didn't like my nails being <laughs> oh, too hilarious. long. I didn't like the feeling of it. Yeah. And so I would bite them. Yeah. And then, of course, what them. happens is there's, you know, inconsistency in how you've trimmed each nail. So you bite it more, bite it more, and eventually it's well, just horrible. Well, that's it. You're trying to consistently take them further and further down. Right. And you wind up biting them like Jack the freaking Ripper, which so is probably not a good out idea. Why the person is biting their nails, I suppose. And if it is a nervousness, then deal with the nervousness, but also still throw something like an NLP switch pattern. pattern. That's what I did. I was literally in a hotel room in Calgary, Alberta. I had woken up, Too much I was getting detail. ready for what my day. And wearing? I thought, 
I don't want to bite my nails anymore. I this is a bad habit. It. Yeah. I did a swish pattern, NLP swish pattern. You can look it up or I don't know. It's in our NLP essentials yep. course. We'll make sure we put a link to that. By the way, the NLP essentials course is included as are all our other premium courses in the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy Lifetime Access Plan. We'll put a link to that in the show notes for anyone interested. If you are a member and you're watching this and you go, I want to upgrade to Lifetime Access, email support at MikeMandelHypnosis.com because we fully credit you for your past membership fees and purchases that relate to that product. Anyway, NLP Essentials, swish pattern, back to the story. It took me what do you think, Mike? Four minutes, maybe? Oh, certainly I ran, longer than that to tell me about I it. I ran the swish pattern about yeah. four, five times. Six is normal. But. And um, been nail biting free ever Everybody since Everybody I time. know who's used swish pattern for nail biting has said it's That'd worked. That'd be my Everybody. go-to. Not to go in with a plan, but that would be my default. Now, Chris, we have a mm -hmm. commercial break here that we've got to get to because uh -oh. we're running out of time in the timery. All right. <laughs> All right, Mike. Let's take it to the commercial break. Tonight, a documentary you don't want to miss, ever. He was only two years old when he was taken from his home in Kentucky. An orphan who traveled to England in the hold of a steamship. He went from abject poverty to the greatest wealth and opulence as he was adopted by a childless nobleman and his lovely wife. As they began to raise him and teach him about life, he began to show potential, despite his humble and even cruel beginnings. At age four, he could run like the wind, astounding since his frame was lanky and awkward. But his spindly legs were deceiving, and his adopted father encouraged him in his athletic endeavors, developing his incredible ability as a sprinter. This is a story of great heroism and even greater wealth. It's a heartwarming tale of victory in the genre of Field of Dreams, The Right Stuff, or JFK. It's the story of following your dreams wherever they may lead you. The story of talent and opportunity colliding in a blinding flash of light and speed. This is the story of a horse, a story that the whole family will enjoy. A horse whose shoes permanently reside in the Smithsonian. This is the story of Ballgasm. Hi ho, Ballgasm! <laughs> That's tonight at six on the Belmont Equestrian Network. Jennifer asks if I've used hypnosis to help those who twitch in their sleep, especially while dreaming about playing sports. That's a very interesting one. That's such a People specific question. Twitch in their sleep it's because normal. of, do you remember what part of the brain it is? <sighs> Twitching in their, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Okay, what is it? Let's get a refund. Tell me now. The pontine tegmentum. I thought you were going to say that. is yeah. the part of your brain that shuts down, down your motor, motor neurons. neurons while you're asleep. Mm -hmm. Why, Chris? Mm -hmm. So that you don't thrash around if you're fighting dragons. Like you don't, who? You don't, like Jack the <laughs> around thrasher. Yeah. You don't want to thrash around in your dreams in and accidentally <laughs> smack your wife in the head or yeah. something like that. Or have her stab you mm -hmm. through the heart or something. Yeah. That's right. So these motor neurons are supposed to shut down. When it happens too much, you get sleep paralysis. When it happens insufficiently, the person will twitch. twitch yeah. Typically, when though, you're falling asleep correct, is when the twitching the happens. The twitching happens in a hypnagogic mm -hmm. state as you begin to go into Because the pontine sleep. tegmentum has it's not shutting completely down. shut down. And what happens is that's when you typically dream that you trip or fall on a step or something yeah. and twitch and wake up. Yeah. Um, I would suggest recognize that this is normal and maybe through direct suggestion you can reinforce the fact that this becomes a thing of the past Absolutely. if it is problematic in, in fact i would i would reframe this during the hypnotherapy or whatever that the twitching is also concomitant with usually having conscious thoughts that when you come out like when you twitch and you kind of wake yourself up yeah you realize that what you were just thinking was the beginning of a dream it didn't make any conscious right. sense it, you couldn't explain this in a normal world and when you reframe that as normal the person can be explained or given the hypnotic suggestion that this will give you a, a wonderful new sense of comfort that you're falling asleep. It right. It means you're almost asleep. 
Excellent. So lead us now, Chris, to our empowering question. All right. So that's the end of the podcast content. Hopefully that was interesting. Empowering question is... Stop being defensive. Ask, yay. Ask yourself, what new information did I get today and how will it affect my life in a surprisingly positive way as I apply it now? Nice one. I've got a metaphor, which is one better than a metaphor. This is called Ontario Police College. And the Kung Fu Fighter. Everybody was I don't a Kung ever Fu told you this. fighting. Their kicks were flashing flash lightning. lightning. In, in fact, it was a little bit frightening. I love how you're changing the accent. Those bits. Anyway, whatever. All right. I did the Ontario Police College um, about 100 times. I would do hypnosis shows there. 100? Oh, my uh, goodness. Yes, I was wow. there four times a year That's for the many, many years, sometimes so more much. frequently. Cops from all over Ontario mm. uh, knew every time there was a new intake of police, they'd have me in at the culmination of it. And I taught their advanced interviewing module. I taught a, a bunch of stuff, courses for them there, which was a blast. But one night I had done a hypnosis show. One guy had wanted to go on stage and he hadn't been up on stage. So we're sitting in the pub afterwards. And I was winning with the junior ranks, not the high, you know, the big guys, but just the, the regular guys. We'd have a beer and talk. Then I'd wind up driving back to Toronto a couple hours. We're sitting in the bar. And one guy was a Kung Fu fighter. He was a cop and he was really good at it and super fast. Guess what I did, Chris? Um, Wrong. Jiu Jitsu? I hypnotized him ah. in the bar. Used a fairly quick induction. Told him that I was the world's greatest Kung Fu fighter, even better than him. And he would challenge me. We'd move the furniture back and actually fight without killing each other. And he would discover that he would move at quarter speed and think he was moving at full speed. <laughs> and I'd be seeming brilliantly fast. So we do this. He gets up and we bow and he starts and he's throwing and I'm just effortlessly stepping in and yeah. bang. It was so, he was just like bowing to me at the end thinking I was brilliant. Then I brought him out of the hypnosis it's So brilliant. and he couldn't remember it at all. That's awesome. Oh man, that's yeah. just comedy. Some of the best stuff, Mike. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening to oh. the, or watching if you're on YouTube yeah. now that we've been doing this for several episodes on mm. video format to the Brain Software Podcast, episode 185. A little less nonsense than usual, just but don't worry, myself. we'll bring it back in 180. No, we're going to continue to offer great value. Yeah. So we hope you loved it. About it. If you are interested in learning hypnosis, study from awesome trainers. We are definitely. Two that are, are pretty darn good. Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy is available for you. Yes. So you can check out our website and sign up. We have free resources as well that you can always find on our website. Subscribe to our podcast if you haven't already using Apple Podcasts or whatever app. Or if you're on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and ring that ring bell. That, ring that YouTube bell, which will always alert you of our latest videos. What do the kids say now? Smash that subscribe button. So do it. Children, I don't and know. we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Thanks. again. And, and good night. night. Hey, Chris, I got a song for you. It's a cartoon I used to watch when I was oh, in Cubs. I wonder what it's going to be, Mike. You're going to no. like it because I'm going to throw in one gesture. Okay. 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 I'm Here ready. I'm ready. Hercules, hero of song and story. Hercules, winner of ancient glory. Fighting for the right, fighting with his might, with the strength of ten ordinary men. Hercules, <laughs> people are safe when near him. Hercules, only the evil fear him. Softness in his eyes. Iron oh. in his thighs, <laughs> virtue in his heart, fire in every part of the mighty Hercules. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is Dennis Bryce Morgan, and you're being given notice as a lot of absolute twaddle just ahead. <laughs> In fact, it's the finest self-indulgent material I've ever seen or heard or heard. Well, <laughs> start again. The King of Calibration, the Roger of Rapport, and the man who puts the black cat, sorry, Black cat. Sorry, I'm gonna do the whole thing again. Ready? I'm just gonna um, do the whole welcome. This is the story of a horse. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm gonna have to just call that voice over because I can hear you. Sorry, Ross. I'm gonna have to do a few sentences again, but this is gonna be great for the outtakes. I hear you starting to snicker. Okay, ready? Yep. Um, this I'll get with this is the story of a horse. As my daughter would say. <laughs> this is the story of a horse. <laughs> stop! <laughs> you gotta stop that. Okay, back up, back up to it. It's the story of following your dreams. Uh, I think I got that part down. Okay. A blinding flash of light okay. speed. I'm, I'm after that. I'm good. Here we go. A horse whose shoes permanently reside in the Smithsonian. 